I am trying to build a Marvel machine that can play tight music and to figure out how it should be designed I'm prototyping the most important parts here on my workbench. So far I've designed this marble gate prototype that can drop marbles with very precise timing. Next I found out that I can use this Higgin drive to rotate a shaft with very precise speed. Now I want to connect the Higgin drive to the marble gate through this new programming wheel prototype. When everything is put together the Higgin drive will rotate the programming wheel and the profiles of the programming wheel will activate the marble gate. So how should we actually design the programming wheel? I'm currently thinking about three different programming wheel designs and in this video we're going to look at these three versions to see which one is best. But to really understand what makes a programming wheel good or bad, let's start from the beginning. first machine I marked the hole locations manually with a ruler and drilled manual pilot holes for screws that secured Lego bricks. And the precision of this programming wheel was relying on the human eye and in the end the wheel wasn't very precise at all. So for the second machine I used a CNC machine to build a better wheel. I machined an extreme amount of holes in a flat plastic sheet and then I bent the sections into quarter segments of a full circle. I used magnets as programming pins and this design was more accurate than the first one but it had so many issues. It was really tricky to get the distance between the four segments right and the music resolution was limited to the whole locations. In the end, this design cost me a lot of pain and now I need to figure out what I did wrong on the two first machines so I can make a better design for my new machine. To make sure that these new designs are much better than the earlier ones, I've started the whole process in a completely new way. When I designed these new versions, I started by asking myself a very basic question. What should a programming wheel do? And the answer to that question is our programming wheel design requirements. On the first machines, I just started building because it was so much fun, but pretty soon it wasn't so much fun anymore. I didn't use design requirements at all and the machines failed. Let's look at how these design requirements are influencing our new designs. For example, we have the high music resolution requirement and the solution for that is to stop using programming pins and start using programming profiles. These profiles can have any length we want and we can play any music rhythm we want. This also means that we don't have to machine as many holes as we did before. The Marble Machine X wheel had 20,000 holes and with the profiles we would only need 2,000 holes, so that's a much simpler machining task. So the programming profiles solves a lot of problem and that's why all three new programming wheel versions uses the profiles instead of the pins. But what is actually the difference between these three designs? Let's look closer at version 1. Version 1 is machined on a rotary CNC machine. The rotary CNC will cut all the programming holes with CNC accuracy and it will also cut the big double helical gear in the same setup. But there's a drawback to this version. This machining task is pretty involved. An experienced professional with a great machine could absolutely get his job done, but I wanted to see if there are simpler ways to make a programming wheel, so I came up with a very experimental idea, version two. The main idea for version two is to use a lot of two-dimensional segments to build a very accurate 3D cylinder by using metal bars and press fits. Instead of making a hole for the programming profile to click into, the profiles clicks to the metal bars. This has some serious advantages. The plastic of the profiles is softer than the metal of the bar, so over a lot of use, the profiles would wear out before the programming wheel does. We no longer need to machine 2000 perfect holes, the metal bar is just perfect to begin with and we don't have to worry about hole tolerance for music timing. Let's measure if this design can play tight music by measuring the distance between the metal bars and when measuring like this the angle of the caliper is affecting the measurement a lot. So I printed a dedicated profile that I could click onto the wheel and then rest the caliper on. This way I get a consistent measurement and it turns out that the wheel is super accurate, only 27 thousandths of a millimeter standard deviation across the entire wheel. By calculating the speed of the programming wheel we can calculate how tight music we could play with it. The accuracy of this wheel would only induce 0.041 milliseconds rhythmic error on average. 
this is tight music. So next I wanted to see how accurate the wheel is with the profile sitting on the metal bar. So I made these measurement profiles and the result was almost as tight. Only a slightly higher standard deviation, definitely impressive results from a wheel printed on a small 3D printer. Let's look at how I made the prototype. I began by pressing the bearings into these central hubs. Then I made this jig to cut metal bars at a precise length. Thanks to the jig, I could cut 50 metal bars in under two minutes. I cleaned up the ends on a metal file and then I 3D printed parts for three days straight on my Dutchy 3D printer. Now I had all the parts, I could begin assembly. And a very important aspect of this design was to get the fit between the metal bars and the circle segments correctly. I used this test stick with different size holes to find out exactly what size hole I wanted for the perfect press fit. Once I found the perfect hole, I used that size for the entire design. And here comes another really important aspect of the build. Before putting these first two segments together, I'm turning the second segment around 180 degrees. This means that if there are inaccuracies in one segment, the next segment will average them out. By always adding the next layer of segments in a new position, the wheel will average out all inaccuracies and become pretty precise. With only the first circle done, the wheel is really bendy and I'm adding the next layer here. And for each layer, I switch the position and each layer makes the wheel more sturdy. I got tired of the plastic bending like this when hammering in the bar, so I printed this support tool that supports all the layers at their correct position. This worked perfectly. No more bent layers and it leaves everything at its perfect place. Next I'm adding the double helical gear that goes onto the wheel in segments and then I could add the M3 machine screws and lastly the spokes. Connecting the spokes to the hubs and the wheel is done. I used some recycled scrap bits of plywood to build a stand for the wheel and the whole prototype is finished and I really really love this prototype. But all in all, is version 2 the perfect way to build a programming wheel? Hmm, I think definitely no. For prototyping purposes, it is perfect, but for a full-size marble machine, I think the segmented approach is just way too many parts and it's just not the right way to make an accurate rotating object. But there's one thing that this design gets absolutely right, the metal bars. <laughs> The advantages of using metal bars as fastening points instead of holes got me thinking. Is there a way to combine the best parts from design 1 with the best parts from design 2? Yes, and version 3 is trying to do exactly that. Version 3 is using a rotary CNC machine again, and in general I think I should use rotary machining for most rotating objects on the marble machine. I'm used to only have access to 2D machining tools, so I've been a bit stuck in my head and I've been avoiding designing things for rotary machining just because of that, and I need to get out of my 2D comfort zone and start designing for turning and rotary CNC. The precision is just on a different level with rotary machining. Let's look closer at how exactly we would build this. So first we build a cylinder structure, and the cool thing here is that the inner and outer diameter is not particularly important in this design. We put the cylinder in the rotary CNC machine and then we use a ball cutter bit to cut a round slot just a bit below the surface. And the good thing here is that we can cut the slot along the axis on the rotary machine, which doesn't add pressure in the rotary direction. We add machining pressure in the direction where the rotary machine will be totally stiff. So it's simpler to machine and simpler to get accurate. And then we can cut the same 64 slots around the entire circle. We use a straight mill to cut a perpendicular slot across the first slot and this slot will position the programming profiles sideways. The precision of these slots is very forgiving. They only need to be kind of precise in their sides, but the length does not matter at all. So this is also a simple machining operation for the rotor CNC and we can easily cut all the slots across the entire wheel. Lastly, we cut metal bars to length and push them into the wheel. The bars will be press fitted in place, so no need for glue or anything like that. Et voila! We have a programming wheel that combines the accuracy of version 1 with the functionality of clicking profiles to metal bars of version 2. It feels like the best of both worlds, and in theory this design would check 
all the must-have requirements and even most of the nice-to-have requirements. But there's still a few questions left, like choosing materials and getting hold of a rotary CNC machine capable of doing the job, but those questions are for later. The only thing that really matters now is to connect all my prototypes and then measure if this system can play tight music. Those tests will determine the future of the Wintergat on YouTube channel. If this setup can't play tight music, I won't build a new marble machine at all, and I could finally put the whole marble machine project to rest. But, on the other hand, if it can play tight music, well, buckle up. Buckle up.